Praise the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you tonight in the name of Jesus. We're so thankful and honored. We're able to come and fellowship your presence and hear your word. Thank you, Lord, for saving us, delivering us, and redeeming us all through Jesus Christ. Being our Lord and Savior, we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, if you have your Bibles, open up Bibles here to Isaiah. And we'll read some divine healing scriptures just to see where the Lord takes us. So we're in Isaiah 53. Now the scripture says here in verse 4 and 5, Surely it borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Those words also are translated as griefs and sorrows and sickness and pains. It's good to read it that way. So it says here, Surely borne our griefs, sicknesses, carried our sorrows, pains. Yet we did as seamen, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, that chastised our peace upon him, and with his stripes we were healed. Now let's go over here to Matthew. Matthew, by the Holy Spirit, is going to refer to this. So in Matthew chapter 8, we'll pick up here in verse 16. When he was come, they brought unto Jesus many that was possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick. That it might fill what spoke by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. And then let's go way over here to 1 Peter. Remember this in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Now the Holy Spirit through Peter is going to put our healing in the past tense by now. So the scripture says here, Who his own self bear our sins and his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unrighteous, by whose stripes ye were healed. Now God placed the sickness and disease that was on mankind upon Jesus. Also God placed the curse that was on mankind and sin and judgment of sin. Why Jesus being crucified. Now, what we want to do as believers is renew our mind to think that way, knowing that God doesn't ever want me sick. He doesn't want me anything to struggle financially. In fact, if you keep going to your right, let's go over here, to, like we're heading again towards Revelation, and go to here to 3 John. you got 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. Now, verse 2. Beloved, now that's each person is a believer. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, as thy soul prospers. Now, this is God's will that each one of his children prosper and have good health. And not only that, but their mind be renewed to God's word. Our soul needs to be prosperous. Our mo- emotions, our mind, our intellect. Our spirit, man, if we receive Jesus, is perfect. He's a new creature in Christ Jesus, pure and perfect. But what happened is that many of us didn't even realize that. And so we did never take time to renew our mind to God's word. We suffered many things that God never intended us for suffer simply because we didn't know how to resist the devil. We sort of accepted, well... I guess it was just God's will. You know, you never know what God will do. Sometimes he says yes to our prayer, and sometimes he says no. No, if we pray God's word, we're praying in line with God's will, and God never did make a promise that he won't fulfill. And Jesus' blood is what qualifies us to receive from God. Now, notice here it says here that God wishes above all things that we prosper and be in hell, and so soul prospers. God doesn't want us to be broke financially. He doesn't want us to struggle financially, and he doesn't want us to have any aches or pains or sick and disease in our body. Now, what we want to do as believers is begin to think that way, renew our mind to God's word, and keep feeding on the word of God. How do you do that? Well, one way, just like we're doing right now, we're reading scripture. And read scriptures, promises from God's word. Keep yourself built up on them. You'll be in better advantage. So when a problem comes, you'll be able to resist it more effectively as you keep feeding on God's word. Every day, just like in the natural, we have to eat to have strength and energy. Well, spiritually speaking, we need to feed on God's word. And Jesus taught us, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word proceed out of the mouth of God. As believers, as we hear God's word, and begin to be taught God's word, how to apply God's word, and begin to look up scripture and own Bible, Highlight those scriptures as you read through your New Testament and Old. As you read through the New Testament, highlight those healing scriptures and faith scriptures and love scriptures. And get yourself built up in about who you are in Christ Jesus before you wander out in the Old Testament. See, we need to know that we don't have any guilt or condemnation. We're not trying to keep the law. We're not trying to be good enough. Then someday God's going to bless us. No, we start out as a child of God. When we receive Jesus, the Lord and Savior, we become a child of God. We start out being blessed. And what we want to do is is know that God loves me, and he gave me eternal, everlasting, abundant life, and he redeemed me from the curse of the law. And sickness is a curse. So is pain. And so is poverty. And we've been redeemed from it. But see, so often many of us didn't know that when we got saved. I didn't know any scripture when I got saved. And I didn't know the Lord's Prayer was in the Bible. We prayed that every service. But anyway, as we begin to hear God's word and begin to accept it and receive it, and hang on to it by, with our faith, by holding fast our confession of faith, by constantly praising God and thanking God that we are what his word says we are. We can do what his word says we can do. We have what his word says we have. 
and constantly decree and declare, this is what God's word says about me. Like I'm the righteous of God in Christ. When the doubt or unbelief or condemnation or guilt comes, that's a great confession to make. I mean, what's more powerful for our eternal security than knowing I'm the righteous of God in Christ? Because the enemy always brings suggestions to our mind. Well, you're not saved because look what you've done. Well, what we did was sin. It was wrong. But we're forgiven by God through Jesus' blood. And we need to decree and declare that I'm the righteous of God in Christ. They think, well, I can't live the Christian life. Look what I did. Well, we're not to sin. But what's going to help us live above those things and walk, walk in victory and live close to God is knowing I'm the righteous of God in Christ and talking that way to yourself, to those thoughts that come to you. Look what you did. No, we need to look what Jesus did and what he did for us. He made us complete. And when we receive Jesus Christ, Lord, we become righteous, right with God, always, 24-7, because Jesus' blood has cleansed us from all sin. Now, when it comes to healing, this helps us in healing, too. Because if we know that we're righteous, then we can know that I'm not paying for my sins I committed, and that's why this sickness is here. No, we've been redeemed from it. <clears throat> and God placed all the sickness, disease, all the sins, all the judgment of sin, all the curse that was on mankind after Adam and Eve sinned, that came upon mankind, he placed that upon Jesus. And we've been redeemed from him. And the more we know that, and the more we talk that way, and the more we see ourselves that way, the more victorious Christian life we're going to live. The enemy always brings the doubt, Satan. He brings the doubt. He brings the unbelief. He brings all those accusations constantly to the believer to try to talk the believer out of believing God's promises. And this is one of the reasons why it's important to read scriptures every day, especially healing scriptures. I mean, what's more important in your health once you receive Jesus Christ, your Lord? And reading scriptures, promises, is going to help us get our mind to think on the word. Our mind's going to think about something. It's going to think about the problem or think about what we're faced with or thinking about this or doubt and unbelief. But as we think on the word, then we can re begin to resist those negative thoughts that come to everyone. This is what Jesus did. Jesus would just answer those thoughts with the word of God. He'd say, it's written in quote a verse. It's written in quote a verse. It's written in quote a verse. That's what we do, or should be anyway, to defend ourselves. And, and coming against those thoughts and feelings, because Satan will tell you when you're believing God for healing, well, you're not any better. You've gotten worse. You still have the pain. And you're going around telling people that by his stripes you're healed, you're a liar. No, well, I'm not lying. We're not lying when we say what the Word says. The Word is truth. The circumstances, the situation, the symptoms lie. Jesus said, thy Word is truth. So the truth is that what the Word says. And we need to say what the word says. This is how we defend ourselves. Because if we don't speak the word, we can't defend ourselves. We don't use prayer to defend ourselves and thank God for prayer. We use prayer to intercede. We use prayer to fellowship with God. We use prayer to seek God for direction in life. We use prayer to believe or receive something. Absolutely. But when it comes to defend ourselves against the devil, against Satan, against the problems of life, we begin to we speak the word. And we need to know the word to speak it. That's another reason why we need to be taught about how to apply God's word to our life. Again, when I got born, I grew up in church. I went to church faithfully. And when I, when I got born again, I didn't know any scripture in the Bible. Maybe the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So I was totally scripturally literate. And here I just recently got born again, baptized in the Holy Spirit. Well, problems got worse. And when you don't know any word, don't know any scripture, you'll think, well, I thought this must be God's will or it's coming from God. And I didn't know any scripture to defend myself. But as I begin to be taught God's word, and still am, begin to be taught God's word, now I can begin to defend myself. Now I begin to use the word and say, no, this isn't God's will. His will is that I prosper and be in health. And by me saying that and praising God and thanking God, Father God, I thank you that by his straps I'm healed. I thank you that Jesus himself took my infirmities and bare my sickness. I thank you, Father God, you wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. He's that soul prosper. And by doing that, it gave my mind something to think about. And I need to keep my mouth speaking God's word, saying what the word says. Because several things happen. That's the number one way to resist the devil, is by saying it's written and quote what's written. That also helps us renew our mind to God's Word. Now our mind begins to think in line with the Word because it has to be reprogrammed, especially if we had a lot of doubt and unbelief and religion taught to us. Like God does know He's healed. God doesn't want you to have anything. You know, it's just a blessing to be poor and whatever. 
you know, those things are kind of either directly or indirectly taught to us. But God wants us to prosper. He made us a seed of Abraham. Now, if God didn't want us to have anything financially, he would have never made us an heir of Abraham's blessing. He could just save us and gave us the new birth. If he didn't want us to have good health, he would have put our sick disease upon Jesus. Well, if that's the case, why are people sick? Well, did he put our sins upon Jesus? Does Christians sin? Now, we're not too, but have we since we've been born again? Absolutely. Well, that doesn't do away with God put our sins upon Jesus. And just because a person was sick doesn't mean that God didn't put our sick disease upon Jesus. What we need to do is begin to stand our ground and find out from God's word. This is what God's word says. So I took, and still do, the last part of Matthew 8, 17, and, and, the, part of, and the last part of 1 Peter 2, 20. I linked them together and begin to say that. Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses, and by his straps I was healed. So I just say, himself took my infirmities and bare my sickness, and by his straps I was healed. And that's the best thing you can say about your health is what the Word says about it. When it comes to divine healing and divine health, you want to speak the Word and say what God's Word said. Now, there's things in the, in the natural that help the person, you know, eating certain things, exercise, fine. Those are things you, a person can do in the natural. But when it comes to dealing with Satan, You can't run him off with jogging. You're going to run him off with the word. And that doesn't mean you don't jog or whatever you're supposed to be doing. Keep using the word. Keep saying what the word says. See, this is how Jesus defended himself. He just kept saying it's written. When Satan brought up something, an accusation, Jesus said it's written and quoted a verse. It's written and quoted a verse. It's written and quoted a verse. Jesus was relentless with the word of God. He was unmovable. He wouldn't get off. He wouldn't say anything else other than what the word said. And that's what we want to do as believers, is when the thoughts come of fear and doubt and unbelief and worry, and they'll come, is answer them. Not let them go unanswered. It's like Jesus answered, the Bible said, and Jesus answers the fig tree. Like it's talking to him. Well, it was. It was telling him, you know, a lie that, you know, we got leaves but no fruit. But Jesus said to it, no man eat fruit of thee here after forever. And his disciples heard it. Well, that tree withered away from the roots. And he's showing us how to use our authority. How, today, it'd be how to use our authority in the name of Jesus. And everything Jesus did in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the believer can do. Because we're supposed to be to do the works that he did in greater works. What would be the greater works? Well, uh, get somebody born again. I mean, Jesus did, couldn't do that. He hadn't paid the price yet. But by using our authority that God gave us, instead of just sitting around wondering why this is going on, have we spoken to it? Jesus taught us to to speak to mountains in the Gospels. Mountains are problems. Like Jesus spoke to the storm. That was a problem. It's going to kill everybody. But Jesus spoke and said, peace be still. And it obeyed him. And then reprimanded his disciples. They didn't do it. So Jesus is teaching us in the Gospels how to use our authority. Today, we use that, that name of Jesus and we come against things. Fear, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Leave me. Go from me, fear in Jesus' name. Unbelief, you go from me in the name of Jesus. Doubt, you go from me in the name of Jesus. Depression, you go from me in the name of Jesus. Confusion, you go from me in the name of Jesus. Satan, I bind you. You can't bring confusion to me. I bind you, Satan. You can't bring any fear to me. I resist you, f- fear. I resist you, Satan. It's written, spit yourself through for the God. Resist the devil and he will flee. How are we going to resist the devil? The same way Jesus did. And it's recorded there in Matthew 4. 1 through 11, and also Luke chapter 4. The way Jesus did it is the way we do it. And that's why the believer, each child of God, needs to know what's written. Why? Well, at least promises, at least healing scriptures, and faith-building scriptures, you know, and love scriptures, and prosperity scriptures. See, so often people are against prosperity as Christians, born-again people. Yep, they never quote prosperity scriptures. They have this idea that God doesn't want anything. But he does. He gave everything he had. He wants us, all that the Father has, it belongs to us. And again, he made us the seed of Abraham and an heir of Abraham's blessing. And that was material. Blessed going in, blessed going out, head not to tail. You can loan and, and, and not have to borrow. Those are financial blessings. And just as God would bless those people's crops in the Old Testament that they obeyed the law, today God has already blessed us and given us everything he has. It's not based on our performance, our new covenant. It's based on what Jesus did and what he freely gave to us. 
So here in this third John, God said here, I, I, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, real plain, and be in health, even as your soul prospers. That's God's will for each child, each child of God. Just like it's God, John 3, 16 is God's will for every sinner to become born again. It's God's will that every one of his children prosper and have good health and have a sound mind, our emotions. Because Satan's after all those areas. He, you know, Satan is the one that comes to take your joy. He's, he's after, he's, all he does is steal, kill, and destroy. And so he wants to take everyone's joy. He doesn't want anybody to have a happy life. He doesn't want anybody to enjoy life. So he brings all the problems. It seems like almost every day he's after your happiness, your joy, and your fun times. He'll do everything he can from bringing you guilt and condemnation, trying to shame you for having a good time. I mean, he'll say, you know, look at you. You're, you're, you got this barbecue. You should be in the house reading your Bible. But, and, and he'd never tell you that before, but you're having a good time with your family. You took a day off work and you joined being with your family, whoever. You're down at the beach and here comes Satan. He can't stand the idea you're down at the beach. You took off work. Yeah, you should be home, you know, and here he goes. Yet yeah, it's got to be rebuked because he'll ruin your vacation. He'll ruin your trip. That you have. He'll ruin the time you got with your loved ones by, by guilt tripping you and bringing condemnation and everything else that he brings to take what? Your joy, your happiness of living. Jesus didn't come to make our life hard. He gave us abundant life. If we're struggling, we're not in God's will. God wants us to resist those guilts and condemnation and shame about what we've done before. And what we haven't done right. Those need those thoughts, feelings, emotions need to be they need to be answered. I resist this in Jesus' name. And you just have to take a vacation by faith. You just have to take a day off by faith. With or without feelings, I'm doing this in the name of Jesus. I'm blessed and I refuse to listen to this other voice in the name of Jesus. And just keep resisting. Because Satan is a controller, he's a manipulator, he's a demon spirit that's jealousy and full of envy. It all comes from him. And so he'll do everything to rob the Christian and anyone else, rob the Christian of enjoying life with guilt, with shame, with condemnation. God doesn't want you doing this. You're not pleasing God because you're doing this. You know, it's not a Satan's business what we do and don't do. Because Jesus is our Lord. We listen to Jesus. And if there's anybody who wants you to have a good time, it's Jesus Christ. Because he gave you abundant life. And he said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. And when a person's burdened down, they don't know how to resist the devil. If, they're, if they do, they're not doing it. And those guilts and shames comes to all of us. And we have to resist it in the name of Jesus. Anytime we're enjoying life, Satan will come with that guilt and shame and condemnation to try to rob the believer of enjoying life. They'll go on a trip and he'll try to lose their luggage. And just one thing after another. And you have to say, Satan, you leave my luggage alone. Okay? Now you go from this family event. You go from there in Jesus' name. Run him off with the word. You get out of here. You're not welcomed here. I resist you in Jesus' name. And that's the time to realize God wants me to have joy in everything I do. He wants me to live a victorious life in everything I do. He doesn't want me to be broke. He doesn't want me to be struggling. And the devil said, look how much money you spent on that. You shouldn't have spent that money. Think about how many times you tithed and gave and that voice came to you. You shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have spent that. You shouldn't have given that. You shouldn't have bought that car. You shouldn't have got this. You shouldn't have got that. <clears throat> Constantly. Bring a guilt and bring a condemnation just to rob you. You just got new carpet. Now he's going to try to make you feel bad. Yeah, new carpet. Why, that's you just wasted your money. Look at this. Well, there's people that don't have anything and you went and bought new carpet. Yeah, I resist you, Satan, in Jesus' name. You go, get out of my house, in Jesus' name. If it's not joy, it's not from God. If it's not victory, it's not from God. God wants to have joy and victory in every year of our life. And Satan's always after. Because Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's after that Christian and everybody else. He's after that Christian's faith. He's after that Christian's joy. After that Christian, Christian's living a happy, joyful life. And we just have to take authority of the devil and bind him in Jesus' name. What did God tell Job to do in the face of all he was going through? At the face of destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. He's got to get joy back in, in Job's life. 
I mean, think about how his, his spouse is talking to him. Curse God and die. So he doesn't got anybody supporting him here that I see. But what did God tell him to do? Because God knows where the joy of the Lord, their strength. And Satan's always after the joy because he's after the strength. So if he can get the believer, feel guilty for they just spent this money, just bought something, just took a vacation or plan on taking a vacation, he'll do everything he can to stop it. Well, you can't leave work. How would they get along without you? Well, I'm going in Jesus' name. I've turned the care of the Lord. Satan, you want to talk about my vacation? Go talk to Jesus. I've turned that over to him. And just keep standing against it. Because he's not going to want that Christian to go do something they want to do. Well, who do you think you are? Who would I think I am? I tell you who I know who I am. I'm the righteous of God in Christ. And there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. And I just resist it. You just have to always engage the mouth. People don't need to hear you saying it. If they do hear you saying it, so what? You're dealing with Satan. Who doesn't want you to enjoy life. He never wants you happy. He never wants you to enjoy living your life that God gave you. He definitely doesn't want you to have a good health. He doesn't want you to have a sound mind. He doesn't want you to be prosperous. He doesn't want you to have any joy. And these are all the things that God gave us that belongs to us. And it's never God's will that we not have joy. It's never God's will that we not be prosperous. It's never God's will that we be broke. He doesn't want us to struggle. He loves us. He redeemed us from all those problems. He became, for we know through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that we through his poverty might be rich. And people need to know that. People that's homeless need to know that God wants them to live in victory. How are they going to know? By someone preaching the gospel to them. The first step is get born again. And getting born again, there's a whole package of abundant life. It's not a blessing that belong to us. It's not just that we get to go to heaven. And that fire is the greatest thing there is. The beast going to hell. But it's all the package that God gave us that belongs to us that every Christian needs to learn. And we need to learn as much as we can, as fast as we can, as soon as we can about what belongs to us in Christ Jesus. And know that Jesus came that I might have life and have it more abundantly. He wants us to have it more abundantly. It's up to the believer to have the abundant life. It's up to the believer to decide, you know what, I'm going to enjoy life. And I'm going to stand against anything else that comes after it. Because Satan will always try to control you with circumstances, with other people, and everything else. And when you begin to learn, and all of us, as we continually learn about what belongs to us in Christ Jesus, we can defend ourselves against all these other accusations that's going to come 24-7. If you're awake, they're going to come. If you're asleep, they'll come in dreams. And if Satan tries to make the believer feel bad because they have something and somebody else doesn't have something. And you shouldn't have that because other people don't have it. Well, there's probably only probably 7 billion people on the planet that's not born again. Should I give up the new birth because they're not born again? I mean, there's no stopping this if you don't put a stop to it. Me giving up salvation, if you could do it, is not going to help those people that's not saved. And me being prosperous is not going to help these, is going to cause someone else not to have something. There's a reason why they don't. The same reason was the way you and I didn't have stuff. Because we didn't know how to defend ourselves. We didn't know what belonged to us in Christ Jesus. And we didn't know how to activate our covenant. So shame and guilt has to be resisted. Or it just torments your life. If you don't run the shame off and the guilt and the condemnation, it comes to all of us. The most spiritual person, if there is one, that comes to them. But it needs to be spoken to. Go. Shame you go for me in Jesus' name. Now, I grew up as a, as a kid. One of the things I used to hear from people was, you should be ashamed of yourself. But you know Jesus bore our shame. And amidst, even if you sinned, you want to resist the shame. And begin to comp- thank God, I'm the righteous of God in Christ. Now, that's going to cause the believer to become stronger. If they have a problem with sin, it's going to help them become stronger to overcome it. But if they keep taking on the guilt and keep taking on the shame and keep thinking, well, I can't even live this Christian life, they'll start giving up. It's not like they leave God or don't believe in Jesus anymore, but they quit what? They quit fighting. The good fight of faith. They start, they begin to lose their hunger and they begin to lose, when they lose their hunger, they'll lose their ambition and they'll no longer think, you know, why even try? I tried it, but I can't live it. No one can. That's why we need Jesus. Jesus helps us live the Christian life. We can't make it on our own, and we don't have to. We're not on our own because we have Jesus in our heart by the Holy Spirit. 
Who's going to help us be more than a conqueror? Who's going to help us live in victory? Who's going to help us with the joy? Who's going to help? Who gave us peace and gave us all the benefits and blessings that belong to us in Christ Jesus? And this is one of the reasons why, brothers and sisters, you and I need to read promises in God's Word every day, to feed our faith on them and renew our mind in God's Word. Our mind, all kinds of accusations come to our mind. It's like you go on your computer and you're doing a search, or on your iPhone, you're doing a search, and all these crazy pop-ups come. And you had nothing, no interest in them. You keep having to delete them. You keep having to delete them. You have to touch the X so it leaves. I'm just trying to find out who won the game. And everything else pops up. Well, the same way, in essence, when we're believing God's promises, those things come to our mind. And they got to be resisted. they got to be deleted. We're going to delete them by speaking God's word, by saying no, by saying, Satan, shut up. That's what Jesus said in, in, in Mark chapter 1. He said, hold thy peace. The message Bible said, he said, shut up. And that's just, you're walking through your house, and the devil will tell you how you're going to make it. How are you going to make your future? You can't even pay your bills now. Satan, shut up in Jesus' name. And that's a good time to go in the bathroom, turn on the light, and look in yourself in the mirror and say, and in my prosperity, I said I shall never be moved. And say it loud with an attitude. That's Psalm 30, verse 6. And just agree and declare it when it comes about your investments, your finances you have, your 401k or whatever. You want to answer that. Satan, you keep your hands off my money in Jesus' name. Keep your hands off my investments in Jesus' name. Yeah, but you don't have anything. I've got investments. I invested in the gospel. i got 104 returns manifesting every day. I have assets to pay off my liabilities. And just keep calling them in in Jesus' name. You're lying. I'm not lying. I'm saying what the Word says. The Word is truth. You're the liar telling me I'm a liar saying I'm healed. You're the liar saying I, the sickness is there. The Word says himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness and by his stripes. For us to say anything else than what the word said, we would be lying because everything else is a lie. Thy word is truth. And we don't let anything take that from us. We defend ourselves with our mouth. We stick up for ourselves with our mouth. Who? Against two? Against the devil that brings all the accusations. Who's always the accuser of the brother? Until we answer those thoughts, they'll control our life. Now, you ever had a friend a loved one. I hope you never had a child that went through this, but got controlled by someone. How much that hurt to see them controlled? And how many times would you talk to them? Not only praying for them, how many times you talk to them? Don't let that person treat you that way. They're taking advantage of you. They're taking your money or whatever. And they, oh, I know, I know. And never do anything about it. Now we've probably all done this. And when someone tried to help us, but the answer is responding with the word. And if we don't resist Satan, he won't leave. He'll just say, he's got to be, he's got to be ordered around. We don't tolerate him. We're not to tolerate shame. We're not to tolerate guilt. We're not to tolerate fear. Feeling the fear, talk to it. Begin to act on those fears that tell you never do that. Then start heading in that direction. I'm going to do it. Face the fear. Whatever it is trying to rob you of doing what you want to do or, or what God wants you to do. How many people never went into ministry that God told them to go in, but because of fear? And yet they've been a, they would have been a great blessing to the body of Christ and to the world. How many people could have been a doctor, been a nurse or a lawyer, whatever, but because of fear, they didn't act on what they were supposed to be in life? So what they do, they are robbed, they only rob themselves, they robbed everybody else they could be a help to. And that's how Satan is a controller. And he uses all these subtle ways to control the believer from getting out into out of their comfort zone. You know, Peter stepped out of the boat. The comfort zone is the boat. That's where the security is at. You can feel it, see it. To step outside of that boat, he's getting out of his comfort zone. This is amazing he did this. And all of us need to step out of our comfort zone. We need more, need more wet water walkers that steps out on God's word and says, this is what God's word says, and I'm stepping out on it in Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, pray for my dear friend tonight. I thank you, Lord, they're healed, they're delivered, they're redeemed, because your word says so, and we stand together in agreement that they are. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, so glad you're able to watch. I want to encourage you. We're coming up in August uh, 2024. We got our New England camp. He's going to be in Springfield, Mass. this year at a hotel. It's going to be August 18th to the 24th. 
Come and be with us. And stay a few days and make all the services and get built up on God's Word. Again, that's Springfield, Massachusetts, Sheridan Hotel, August the 18th through the 24th, 2024. If you'd like to receive our newsletter, give me your address, uh, and I'll send it out to you. You can write me by writing Jesse Rich Ministries. It's going to come in a form like this, letter form. Jesse Rich Ministries, Post Office Box 237170, New York, New York, 10023. You got a prayer request? Include that, and I'll stand with you. Or message me. Really enjoyed being here tonight. Remember, you're more than a conqueror, and Jesus loves you. And because of Jesus, the greater one that dwells inside of you, you can do all things through Christ. Till next time, we love you. And remember, keep speaking the word. God bless.